Hello YouTube, the Blob here, and welcome to the third installment of the CGL tournament. Uh, third and final game, Warrington, Virginia, the Game Store, and it was hosted by Brandon Phelps. First annual CGL tournament hosted by Brandon Phelps. And um, I gotta throw a spoiler alert at you. Uh, I didn't do terrible in the first two games, and I found myself at the second table facing off against G. Phelps, um, the man who basically helped me understand this game as much as I have. So, once again, I'm lucky to face off against an opponent that I actually know uh, so that I can play the man and I can play uh, his tendencies. And in the first two games, I wasn't allowed to use my army. I had to use my opponents. But in this third game, I get my highborn elf army and I actually get to try it out. So let's run through that real quick while you look at the unit of two chariots uh, on my left flank during deployment. But uh, I got a high prince on an ancient dragon, hero's heart, star metal alloy, dragon staff, lucky charm, a uh, commander with destiny's call, a fleet officer, a mage with the fiery heart order, lightning van braces, the magical heirloom, uh, Path of Alchemy, so I took Glory of Gold and Word of Iron. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Two units of five highborn lancers who are naked, no command or banners. Ten citizen archers, also naked. Twenty-two sea guard, full command with the war banner of Rima, which I always forget uh, throughout this tournament. Seventeen sword masters with the stalker standard and... Gene was the one kind enough to point out to me why Gene even bothered doing that. And I had no answer, so thanks, Gene. <laughs> uh, one unit of two Reaver Chariots, that's what you see right there in front of you. Five Grey Watchers and three Sea Guard Reapers. That's my army. Um, it shoots a lot, but it is Ballistic Hill shooting, which isn't great. Uh, isn't overpowering, I should say. And I have a few combat and maneuver units, so... What the heck, right? Why not uh, get right to it, see what he does. He brought orcs and goblins. He's got, like, two giants and a spider. A whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I am concerned, but uh, at least I know the guy, right? So, all the way to my left is the unit of two chariots. Uh, I put them out here, you know, whatever. They can uh, vanguard, which is really nice. So, I, I, I can remaneuver them. Uh, Bolt Thrower, on loan from one of my friends, Mr. Cavaccini, who actually got this army of Highborn Elves from. This is his uh, Empire Cannon down the bottom left, so it's my Bolt Thrower for the tournament. 22 Seaguard, Swordmaster's right behind that. Um, I can't tell if the mage is in there. He might be. Uh, Archers, and there is the mage. Two more Bolt Throwers on the hill. Ancient Dragon with the man. Both chap units of Reavers, and then way out on the end is where I put the Great Watchers. There was no real reason to put them anywhere else. It just seemed good to do it here. Um, my opponent got some Grotlings. Uh, right in the middle of the map is this uh, Swamp, so there they are. My Vanguard, I sort of pivot the Chariots like this, and I do that because he's... And I didn't get many shots here, so you have to bear with me. This is game three, so I'm trying to like move along. We want to play the whole game. And it's important, you know. Right. And I threw everything down. So one, and I'm moving. And I'm just positioning. He's got a bunch of monsters on the other side of this fence. This is my right flank. Um, he's going to get up to me quick. His army's designed to just rush me. So I'm going to get one good round of shooting, maybe. And then everything goes crazy. So, you know, I, I, I'm i uh, not too worried about it. But at the same time, I know the Grey Watchers are going to die. Uh, and the Highborn Lancers need to be in a place just to hit the Giants and whatnot. Highborn Lancers move out like this. This is sort of playing with the charge range of the Giants. I'm blocking my sight. He's also got like a Squig Hero. A Goblin Squig Hero back there. Behind the uh, impassable tower. Uh, sea guard step forward a little. Chariots maneuver a little. And then you can sort of see what he's got going on there. 
This is my right, his left. These are his grotlings. They're the ones I targeted first. Because one good maneuver, and they can just charge in the bolt throwers on the hill, and then the bolt throwers are done shooting for the rest of the game. And I can't have that, so I start lighting them up, put wounds on them. Uh, and my bolt throwers start going after his fast cav. He's got wolf riders, but then he's also got boar boys in units of five riding around. And they are way out on my left, his right. He tried to use the hill you see in the picture to block some of my shots. Um, and these are long range shots instead of shooting at the giants, which would have been regular range. Um, this is this is actually very important when it comes to the way Gene plays his army. Um, he likes to use these as, as, as mage bunkers, but also as redirectors. Normally, you know, normally that's what people do. But he also likes to push them hard in flanks. I've seen him at times line them up in his opponent's battle line in anticipation of riding around the back or being immune for the rest of the game, shooting short range with throwing weapons or whatever he's got. So I, you know, got to get rid of him and keep shooting, keep shooting. Grotlings, this is going to be bottom one. Uh, try a long bomb charge because he knows I'm trying to kill them and he rolls like double ones. <laughs> so lucky for me right there and uh, obviously my uh, silver highborn lancers are probably going to go have to, have to go in there and take care of that uh, giants maneuvering for stuff four boys coming out on the other flank you can see here the fence is a big issue too I'm not trying to charge over that fence I, I'm still under the impression that it takes dangerous terrain Four boys start to move out here. And you can see he's got another unit of six four boys back there. He's got a huge unit of iron, iron orcs here, a spider, um, savages, and then the two giants. And back there is his cave hero. So you can see what's going on. In his magic phase, he puts twisted effigy off on the sea guard so that they can't shoot. I had to allow this. Because he's got Willow the Wisp, which in uh, the game with my first opponent, if you go back and watch, was very important because it randomized his movement, and I couldn't have him doing that to any of my troops. Because I really need to be able to position my own forces on the battlefield and make this battle work. So Twisted Effigy goes off, and no more shooting for the Sea Guard. He puts Evil Eye on a spider just to beef its movement. And you can't tell from this shot, but it is the closest to me out of all his forces, and it is an easy charge range of everything in my battle line, save like the sword masters because they're blocked. But he could also charge this right into Bolt Thrower Hill and cause a world problem. Top of two Lancers declaring a charge into the Grotlins. This just has to be done, plus, it gets me away from the Giants, and it's an easy charge. And then this happens it's a blurry photo. But basically because I couldn't shoot and the spider was up in my face, I looked at all the options and this seemed like the best one. I know it sounds crazy, but it seems like the best one. So um, I charged him and it was an easy charge. I don't know what this was. This might have been... I don't know what that was. Uh, chariots maneuver like this to shoot up more wolf riders. Sword masters sort of angle a little bit because, in my mind, once the uh, sea guard go down, everything's uh, done for. And the ancient dragon comes up, and I did this to get away from the giants for now, but I also did this to put pressure on a savage orc unit, um, sorry, or feral orc unit, sorry, and. Uh, also, because I can fly over the Grotling fight if it gets to be a glue uh, glue match for my knights, and I can threaten any number of things, including the spider. Grey Watchers move up. I'm basically feeding them to the giants. Archers peel off a bunch of savages or ferals. I was very happy about that. And then in Magic, this is the armor boost. Why not, right? Also makes the spider flammable. He had to let this go because he didn't want me to have uh, glory gold. 
because that would have made me fire and him flammable. So, I mean, you do the math on that. Gray Watchers or something. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I think that was the Gray Watcher shooting into the giant. They did a win. More feral shot down, I think. More savages. And the crossbows go to work. The uh, Reapers go to work on his Boar Boys. Oh, yeah. And finally, combat. We start picking up Brock. Not as many as I would like, but we didn't suffer any dangerous terrain tests going in Swamp either, so that was fortunate. But you can see they stick. So, you know, if he sends his orc mob in, we'll be destroyed. I don't know. We'll see. In this fight, um, I do two wounds to Spider. Forget about the War Banner of Rima. And he kills a bunch of guys and wins combat, but we stick. So, I knew it was stubborn. And I knew um, there was a low chance of it running. But like I said earlier, I didn't really see the tactical options. Um, and he didn't run. So, boo on me. Bottom of two. And there's going to be some charges now. <laughs> Quick Hopper Hero going after the Grey Watchers. Giant going after the back of my dragon. Other giant going after my Grey Watchers. Boar Boys trying to make a long bomb charge through the woods into the chariots. And I thought this was a good idea on my opponent's part. I didn't see why this wouldn't be a good idea at all. Giant makes it in the bag of the dragon. Boar boys don't make it, I don't think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they don't. Um, giant makes it back in my dragon, and at this point, I'm very curious what happens because I have no idea. I've never seen this happen. Other giant easily makes it in the Grey Watchers. Bye bye, Grey Watchers. Hopper doesn't go anywhere. And you can see this. I, I reform the knights to bring. Uh, more knights into combat after the fight with the Grotlings, and also to prevent the uh, ferals from charging into my sea level. So ferals into my knights. And in this combat, we managed to kill a few. Uh, they do lose a guy to dangerous terrain, so that was cool. The iron orcs were going to charge into the sea guard, and this was a critical moment because it was a five inch. It was five. He needed to roll on the dice. And he bungled it. And this is just the bad luck of the dice. This should have been a makeable charge. And it would have finished off the sea guard. No question. But it didn't happen. And this is what turned my bad sort of, you know, optionless bad choice, I should say, tactically, of sending the sea guard in. This is what makes it into a good choice later. It isn't that I had a brilliant decision and precognition, it's that I did this thing that I thought I only had. That was my only option. And then my opponent, his counter option didn't materialize. So there's that. And there's his... <laughs> there's his die roll. Uh, <laughs> for his charge. Wolf Riders, they come around. They got to eat this bolt over. They got to do something. And that's what that looks like because you can also see the six uh, six boar boys come around the hill finally. So in combat, let's see here. Yeah, it all looks like that. In combat, basically the Grey Watchers get punked. I mean, there's no question of that. There's Gene. Uh, throwing weapons into the bolt thrower, do one wound. Uh, yeah. Bring the pain. I'm not sure how he did this wound now, now that I think about it. Anyway, magic. He puts bring the pain on these guys on the sea guard. He's, he's going to stomp their guts out. He's tired of this mess, and I don't blame him. Again, I couldn't allow Will of the Wisp to go off, so he's going to be allowed to have something. No question. Uh, there's a fight with Grey Watchers, and bye bye, Grey Watchers. It, he killed like every last one. <laughs> like every last one. It was, it was rough. He reforms the face this way. Uh, this giant goes into the back of the dragon. 
and my guy does a ton of wounds. The giant goes back and only does two wounds, and then the dragon itself finishes the guy off. This, I think, was also bad die rolling on um, my opponent's part, because I think the giant uh, strength strength 5 or strength 6, even though I'm tough, I think I'm resi resilient 7. I think he needed 5 to wound, but don't quote me on that. Um, and I get to reform like this, knowing this combat's going to come apart here. The highborn lancers are screwed, so I reform like this. Uh, Seaguard managed to put three more wounds on the spider. This is the, uh, marine, this, the, the, uh, marine captain, whatever you call it, fleet commander. And I think this was, well, I don't know what this was. <laughs> you can see he killed a bunch more Seaguard. And then in this combat, highborn lancers finish off the grotlings, kill one feral. And then they're mowed down to the Lancer. Good job, boys. You did your job. Ferals, uh, Savages, or whatever they are, reform like this. Top of three. My Chariots are going to try a long bomb charge into his unit of six pigs. Through the fort. Um... The sword masters are trying a long bomb charge into the sa into the ferals, the infantry unit of ferals, and the dragon wants in on the ferals. Uh, highborn lancer unit wants to hit the dragon that ate the uh, gray watchers all the way out on my right flank. Not sure what this is. And the sword masters. So sword masters make the charge. Dragon makes the charge. Lancers make the charge. And believe it or not, and we'll jump forward a little bit. No, nah, never mind. The chariots make the charge. So in magic, I'm able to get the armor spell off again. Combat set up to look like this. Um, my opponent at this point is really unhappy uh, about what's going on, but we're having a good time. I mean, you know. Um, the whole time, he's a great guy to play with, win or lose, and I was just having a good time anyway. Um, this madness continues. I think maybe we're in combat? I guess we're in combat. Although I don't remember this going down like this, but maybe my crew is killing his wolf guys. Bolt throwers start shooting up pigs. We shoot up more pigs. There in the bottom right is where you can see the chariot make contact with his unit of six. So I'm going to do 2d6 impact hits. It's all up to the impact hits, near as I can tell. Um, and then Bolt Thrower shooting at Iron Orcs, I'm pretty sure. And Citizen Archer shooting at Iron Orcs, because there's nothing else to shoot at. Yeah. So in this combat, I do well with the impact hits and just beat the bejesus out of the unit. There you go. All the way down to the mage. Picked up the points for the unit. His mage is um, right there. This is the guy with all the sweet, sweet magic. He runs, and believe it or not, we don't catch him. But it looks like this. In this combat, we charge into the giant. This is just, maybe I shouldn't have done this. Maybe I should. I mean, feel free to leave your comments. I was hitting at strength 5. I think he's Resilience 5, but I don't know a giant's stats by heart. And this guy was going to go eat Bolt Throwers, so I figured if I'm going to die, I might as well die charging. Managed to put three wounds on it, and then murder. You can see he killed everyone but the badly painted guy. <laughs> the guy I haven't dipped in, um, in furniture varnish yet. In this combat, yeah. And I'll go back. Take it all in, look at all the uh, ferals, and then boom. So, Swordmasters pretty much lose their back rank, as you can see. The dragon takes no wounds, and the feral unit's annihilated. Uh, his general runs, and the Swordmasters chase him, and we don't catch him. And there you go. We, have, we just couldn't catch anyone. Couldn't catch anyone in this game.
So the Swordmasters want to be a part of the spider combat. But, oh yeah, that's exactly what happened. Okay. So they're chasing the general and they're going to end up clipping the spider, is my understanding. And because we didn't fight this combat yet, Swordmasters get to fight twice. And we end up crushing the spider in combat. And I couldn't believe it. A couple of bad die rolls here and there by opponent, by my opponent. A couple of good die rolls by me. And the game um, changes in a whole different way. Now, the Iron Orcs are still incredibly dangerous. There's no question of that. So I'm not entirely sure how to handle that. But the dragon is still alive. Bottom of three, my opponent throws his iron works in. Bam, no problem. I saw no reason to flee here. Uh, I strike first, and I might as well just kill as many as I can, right? His general rallies. Some of his guys here continue to run. <coughs> Excuse me. And his mage, I believe, runs off the table. Yeah. And his boar boy is right there. You can see when they continued to flee, they ran right in front of my chariot's arc, so now I can push them off the table. That's just bad luck, too. Hopper guy comes out of hiding, even though maybe now is the time to just leave uh, Hopper guy. If you were in uh, the Were Night Goblins, their army, you would run. <laughs> Giant finishes off the last Brave Lancer. With two wounds on it. In this combat, we hew down some orcs, uh, but they get a bunch of sword masters, and I charge off the pigs. And top of four, I send in the dragon and the sea guard in the flank of the iron orcs. This is maximum effort time. He's going to annihilate me, or I'm going to annihilate him. <laughs> and I, I have this. Fear that he has the firepower to actually do it in the Iron Orcs because I don't know. I never play Iron Orcs. Don't know what's going on here. Again, this madness. I mean, it's a wound. Maybe he finished off the Wolf Riders. Voltar, Giant. We're pelting the Giant way out on the right flank. He's like way out there, so the Voltars are just pelting him, hoping to kill him before he gets there. Oh, and we shot the hopper. That's the other thing. When he finally hopped out behind the, from behind the building, and I told him he shouldn't do it just now, I forgot that we actually gunned him down. It was rough. And then this combat. Yeah. You know, playing as orcs and goblins um, regularly, that's my usual army, and also playing as vampire coven a lot, uh, I'm not used to the fact that elf infantry strikes first. I'm just not. And I forget that I get to swing with almost all my models all the time. And my opponent never gets to swing with all of his models because some of them are going to be dead. So, yeah. This is what this looks like. We just tore him up. Tore him up real bad. Um... And he was attacking uh, mostly the sword masters, I want to say. Yeah. Including the champion. Back there you can see a die on the guy with the white cape. That's the champion with an extra wound. There's a reform like this. The dragon's no longer in combat. Bottom of four. Uh, not sure what's going on here. But his general charges into the flank of my ancient dragon. Because I have wounds. Um, and this was a very curious situation for me. Oh, I know what's going on. This is the combat. He's got no magic and he's got no shooting. So we go right to combat. And the remainder of his unit dies. But his BSB is still alive. And you can see he finished off the sword masters. And then his general had charged into the dragon because it's wounded. And at this point, I was like, wow, I wonder if he can actually kill that thing. There's the shot. BSB's gone now, too, by the way. And believe it or not, he murders the orc general. 
So basically, the guy on top of the dragon swings first. His orc general came in, and the guy hit all hit all of his attacks, wounded three times, and then my opponent rolled to save, saved none, and the orc general was killed outright without the dragon having to go. At that point, um, basically, Gene. Yep. At that point, basically, Gene was like, "Good job on that." Um, all this. <laughs> And called it right there. And it ended up a... I gotta check my paper. There it is. It ended up a 17-3. Which, you know, third win of the day. Three wins, three games. I was shocked, to say the least. I got lucky. I admitted fervently, and will continue to admit to this very day, winning those three games... Uh, Required a good amount of bad luck on my opponent's part. But there you go. Um, I ended up second place. Third place went to Mr. Phil Blake, my second round opponent. Uh, second place went to me. Um, I think Gene, or no, I'm sorry, there was a tie for third. And uh, trophies were had by all, enjoyment all by all. I, I think I got photos that weren't game photos. I actually got photos of some armies. And uh, some people and also there was a group photo taken right towards the end of this game three I'll try to grab that from my uh, email or whatever and maybe I can do a recap sort of of the CGL I'll see what I can do about that but uh, this has been game three of the CGL tournament first annual CGL tournament put on by Brandon Phelps in Warrington Virginia at the game store to see who is the best player Three games, two games where you played with your opponent's army instead of yours. And uh, it was wonderful. <laughs> and uh, thanks for watching.